Hey guys, Jeremy here, Simple Little Life, and welcome to another edition of Tool Time Tuesday. This week, I'm gonna show you what I keep in the toolbox on my truck. But before we get to that, let's take a look at a couple of viewer knives. The first knife we'll take a look at this week was sent to us from Robert, and Robert is from San Diego, California. I love San Diego. Now, this was one of the first knives he made. He made it with O1 tool steel. He cut it out with a hacksaw and used a file to put the bevels on it and do all the profiling with it. This is a fantastic looking blade, very muchly made by hand, very nicely done, Robert. He also used desert ironwood for the scales, and I think it looks fantastic. Keep up the great work. Thanks for sending this in. Also, the next knife that Robert's gonna make is going to be a marking knife for his woodworking, so that's really cool too. Dave is a 13-year-old from Croatia, and he sent pictures of this knife, one of his first knives he ever made, and he used a file for the steel and just some wood that he could find laying around. That, to me, represents a really cool take on making a knife. You kinda just, you know, if you want it that bad, you'll find the means to get it done. That's exactly what Dave has done here. Fantastic work, Dave. Keep up the great work, 13-year-old knife maker. That is so cool. And the last knife we'll look at is from Chris, and he is from Turo, Nova Scotia. Sorry if I said that wrong. This is one of the first few knives he's made, and this was the first one that he'd ever tried a freehand hollow grind, and I think it turned out fantastic. The bevels look really nice, super clean. I like the shape of this, and a really great little sheath to accent it. Fantastic knife, Chris. I think this looks great. Thank you so much for sending these pictures in. If you'd like to have your knife featured on this channel, just email me, jeremy at homesteadknives.com. We'll get them featured. Keep in mind, I do have about 250 emails right now in the queue. Just so you know, I will feature it. It's just taken a while because we're getting so many of these in. Keep them coming. It's so cool to see what you guys are doing. So before we actually look at the box, I'll just kind of give you my standpoint on these boxes. Now, I'm not setting this up as a tradesman or a construction worker. I don't use these tools on a daily basis. This is more set up as an emergency type toolbox. You know, if I have to repair a fence on the homestead or if a tractor needs some work. Um, also for road maintenance and road emergencies. If, you know, in the wintertime I hit the ditch, I want to be able to have some tools to get myself out or also help other people if they're in need as well. So that's how I've set this box up and so it's really kind of these tools live in here these are all secondary tools to anything I have in there so I never take these tools out and put them in the shop they live here the box that I chose I wanted one with a single lid that hinged at the back I'm not a huge fan of the kind that open up in the middle of the gull wing for the reason that I like to keep some longer tools in here and I don't want to have to fish them through and around and things I like to be able to just lift it up you know I could put a shovel in here a decent sized shovel pickaxe a large a large uh, you know I've even got my jackal in here which is quite long but it, I could just put it straight in and pull it straight out which is really nice feature so that's kind of how I chose this one. I actually picked this one up used at a local classified site and I think I paid 75 bucks for it. So that was a pretty hot deal, really useful and uh I like that I can keep these tools with me all the time. They're dry, they're secure, and they're always ready to go. So let's take a look at what's inside. All right, so let's take a quick look inside. Um, right off the bat, I've got this little removable tray. I kind of like that. Got a few ratchet straps in here. I keep a hundred foot tape measure in here because, uh, you know, if you're measuring fences out and you need to, you know, replace some wire, it's nice to be able to take a decent measurement. Uh, all kinds of stuff on the homestead that's handy for. Got some cordage, some snips. I use those quite often. I want those easily accessible. Some junky hammer and a few random uh, fasteners, electrical tape, zip ties, some gloves. And right over here, close to the driver's side, I keep my hitch. Uh, I think it's actually illegal to leave your hitch installed in your vehicle. I don't like to do that, so I always take it out when I'm not using it. And then uh, the trailer I have is quite low compared to my truck, so I've got this big drop. And then I also have another hitch down in there for a different trailer. Nice to just keep those readily accessible. I don't have to jump in the box. I can just reach over and grab them from here. I keep a tarp handy. In this little box, I keep all my ratchet straps. I try to keep them nice and neatly organized. Obviously one's gone rogue on me there. I need to get that cleaned up. It's so nice to be able to just like grab these and go. We got a crop duster. Okay, sorry about that. So yeah, I like to keep my ratchet straps all nice and organized that we can just grab them when you need to tie something down. Keeping them wrapped up really speeds up the process in the lumber yards or whatever you're picking up. Always like to try and keep that in nice order. And then uh, here's my big jackal. And this is such an incredibly handy tool. This will get you out of so many pickles. Uh, they're quite dangerous and they do so much that they can be a little, people use them incorrectly and get hurt. So you really gotta watch yourself with these. Farmer Jack, two ton. I also like to keep a little four ton bottle jack. In case I have to change out tires, I'd far rather use these than the ones that come with your vehicle. So I keep one of those in here. 
booster cables. Those I probably use more to help other people than for myself, but every now and then, you know, the tractor battery's dead or something, it's always nice to have those on your vehicle, ready to go. And then this is one of those bungee cord spider web things, and this is super handy. I use this thing all the time when I'm taking in the garbage or, you know, if you're hauling a load of dirt, I can just take one of my tarps, lay it over the box, put this over top, and that way you're not spilling debris all over the road. And it's good to be responsible when you're hauling stuff in your truck. You know, one thing that drives me nuts is when I see trucks going down the road and they've just got like litter and garbage flying out of them. Oh, that's, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. A big old tow rope, use this quite a bit. And then I also keep a few little tools. These are more for winter, a little shovel if I need to dig myself out if I'm stuck. Keep a box on here. A Fiskars splitting hatchet. Not entirely sure why I have this. I kind of think, oh yeah, if I'm uh, you know, out in the woods somewhere, I really don't ever go in the woods much, but I have this. I don't know. This actually doesn't ever get used. Some more gloves. I've got a really large ball if I need to haul a different trailer. And I've got the tools in here that I can switch this out. Tarp. Two cycle engine oil, mostly for the chainsaw or the weed whacker or something. And then in this truck I had uh, my water pump develop a slow leak and so I had to keep some of this. Uh, I ended up fixing it so I don't need that, but it's always nice to have. You never know when somebody else might uh, need a little bit of uh, coolant just to get them to the nearest service station or something like that. So always nice to have a jug of this in here, especially if you have the room like in a box like this. And then in this little toolbox, I've just got some basic tools that I can actually make some Pretty decent repairs. Uh, I've got a digital multimeter, really nice to have around for quick troubleshooting. Something's not working. Even something like your your trailer lights, you can at least try and get an idea of what might be happening. And then you know, basic sockets, screwdrivers, uh, an alignment bar slash pry bar. I have a full wrench set in this little Klein pouch. These things are super handy, really robust. Really like these. And I've got a decent sized ball peen hammer. Some screwdrivers that are reserved for prying purposes or if you need a really big heavy screwdriver. A little pry bar. Some adjustable wrenches. Three different sizes. Water pump pliers. Vice grips. Again, more screwdrivers and uh, an extension for my socket set. So really there are a lot of real quick repairs I can make um, most of this is homestead related, like on the side of the road you, you can fix stuff too, but mostly, you know, if just something needs to be tweaked or adjusted on a tractor or a piece of equipment, it's really, really nice to have this equipment available to me. Alright guys, so there's just a quick look at my toolbox that I keep in my pickup truck. One thing to note that my truck is an 8 foot box and I love that, they're so hard to find nowadays and it's nice when you can put full sheets of plywood in there and they're not hanging out. Same thing, you gotta pick up a whack of two by fours, eight footers, you can get them all in here. You don't have to strap them in, they just stay. Really like having an eight foot box and uh, yeah. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers.